Hello there and welcome back to my YouTube channel Odavig Structural Hub. This is a place where you learn, build and innovate. So today I want to start a new topic and that is structural design. Into this topic I will begin by the introduction and under introduction at the end of this introduction you should be able to know number one the aim the primary aim of structural design number two the definition of design number three design philosophy and number four you should be able to know design loads that is live load and dead load so that is all about introduction and then after introduction i will start designing number one reinforced concrete to bs 8110 and then number two steel design to bs 5950 to begin with structural design i want to challenge you and this is the challenge have you asked yourself what if the building you are in right now had a hidden flaw a flaw so small you can't see it but big enough to cause it to collapse in a storm so that is a structure a structural design prevent so uh, if you can compare our structures with a human body as you can see a human body is made up of bones so the bones can act as a column and then it is also made up of muscles and you can call the muscles as the beams and then the human body the the, the, the muscles and the, the bones are covered with flesh so if you can compare flesh with a structure we can say that that is a, a walling or a cladding that encloses the the, the the structural the structural element or the skeleton of a structure i want to begin by defining what a structure is a structure or a structure is a connected or is a system of connected parts which help in transferring loads from the topmost of a structure which is a roof to the bottom part of a structure which is a foundation so by doing so the structure remains stable and safe for use so what is the primary aim of structural design the primary aim of structural design is to ensure that the structure will perform satisfactorily during its life or design life again let's define what a design is the design is the entire planning process for a new building structure bridge tunnel roads etc from the outline concept and the feasibility studies through mathematical calculation to working we have inputs into engineering design number one we have client brief number two we have experience number three we have imagination number four a site investigation number five models and lab test number six economical factors and number seven in environmental factors we have two main types of design process number one you have conceptual design this is the early stage where you focus on ideas creativity and the problem solving and then you have number two detailed design these stages turn the concept into fully workable plan example technical drawing material selection etc so let's talk about design philosophies and what is a design philosophy a design philosophy is a fundamental set of principles assumptions and approaches that guide the process of planning analyzing and detailing a structure or, <coughs> or infrastructure 
project to ensure it is safe, functional, economical, and durable throughout its intended life. So you have three different design philosophies. Number one, you have the permissible stress design, or sometimes it is called modular ratio or elastic design. And then number two, we have load factor method. And then the last one is limit state design. So let's begin by number one, which is permissible stress design, or sometimes we call it modular ratio or, <coughs> or elastic design. So in this, in this design, the stresses in the structure at working loads are not allowed to exceed a certain pro proportion of the yield stress of the construction materials and it is commonly used in CP114 and the BS449. So this is the oldest codes of design. Of number two, load factor design, which is plastic design. This take account of the behavior of the structure once the yield point of the construction material has been reached. It was permitted in CP114 and the BS449 but was slow in gaining acceptance and was eventually superseded by more comprehensive limit state approach. Also, this one is not being used today. Now, the third philosophy is the limit state design. LSD is a modern method used in structural engineering for designing structures to ensure both safety and serviceability. Most modern structural codes of practice are now based on limit state approach. Example of the codes include BS8110, BS means British Standard 8110. So this one is for concrete. And then you have BS 5950. This one is for steel work. And then you have BS 5228. That one is for masonry. And then you have BS 5400 for bridge. We also have Euro code, example EN 1992. So this one is again for concrete and EN 1993. That one is for steel. We also have the Indian standard, for example, IS 456. And then we have the US, we have the ASD, stroke LRFD. We have two main types of limit state design. Number one, we have the ultimate limit state ULS. It's designed to ensure safety against structural failure. Example of structural failure include collapse due to maximum loads, fracture or loss of equilibrium, instability that is buckling. We have the rupture of material, and then you have number two, serviceability limit state, SLS. So this one is designed to ensure comfort and the proper functioning of the structure under normal usage. Example of serviceability limit state include deflection, vibration, cracking, leakage, and settlement. Let's talk about principal sources of uncertainty in structural design. So number one, we have uncertainty in loading. So this arises because actual loads can vary over time and differ from the design assumption. Example, we have the dead load variation. In inaccuracies in estimation, self-weight finishes or permanent fixtures. And then we have the live load variation, unpredictable occupants pattern, crowd density or usage changes. Then we have the environmental loads. We have the wind, snow, wave, earthquake forces, temperature effect, etc. Then we have impact and dynamic loads, vehicle collision, machinery vibration or blast loads and then we have loads combination uncertainty in how different loads may diff may occur simultaneously so that is all about uncertainty in loading 
we proceed to number two or B, uncertain in material properties. Material strength and stiffness vary even for the same grade of batch. Example, manufacturing tolerance, difference in steel, uh, uh, differences in steel, yield strengths, concrete comp compressive strengths, timber defects. Then you have uh, egging and deterioration. You have corrosion, creep, fatigue, weathering. Moisture content, this one is in timber or soil, affecting strength and modulus of elasticity. And then you have in, in homogeneity, variation in material composition and defect. Then we go to the third one, a certain, a certain in structural modeling and analysis. This arises from simplified approximation and incomplete knowledge in our calculation. Example, idealization errors, neglecting secondary effect, soil structural interaction, dynamic behavior, and geometric tolerances. We proceed to the next one, uncertain from human and execution factors. So for this one, even with perfect analysis, human actions introduces variability. You have the construction error, inspection and quality gaps, maintenance quality. And then you have model of safety and reliability. Uh, because of these uncertainties, structural design codes are a partial safety factors in limit state design or factor of safety in working stress design to, en to ensure a low probability of failure. And then how can you how can you uncertain how uncertainties are rationally allowed for in design? Number one, we have application of safety factors that is working stress design and the limit state design. Number two, load combination, example 1.4 GK plus 1.6 QK. So that is dead load plus live load. Conservation modeling, we have conservation modeling assumption, quality control and inspection, reliability based design. Then let's look at design loads. So design loads, we have number one, we have the dead load, which is symbolized by GK in capital or QK in small letter. So uh, what is a dead load? Are all the permanent loads acting on a structure? So this one include self-weight of a structural member, uh, that one can be beam, columns, slabs, walls, roofs, etc. We have the weight of the finishes, example flooring, plaster, tiles, etc. We have the weight of permanent equipment, example lift machinery, water tanks, etc. So we proceed to imposed load or life load. So it's symbolized by QK in capital or QK in small. <clears throat> so what are the live load or imposed load? So these are a load from occupants and the use, which can be moved or changed in magnitude. Example, include people, furniture, vehicle. So specified in codes depending on use. For example, we have BS 6399 part one, that is 1984 code of practice for dead and imposed load. So if you want to find the various values for imposed load or dead load, you can check in BS 6399 part four, 1984. So you will get all the dead load and imposed load in that section. We proceed to wind load. So that is the wind pressure 
So a uh, wind pressure is provided in section 4, part 2, 1972, wind load of BS 6399. So I will end there for today. And in my next session, I will start uh, designing concrete that is reinforced concrete to BS 8110. So don't miss my next class. And for those who have not subscribed to this channel, I do encourage you to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you may be the first person to be notified when I upload a video. So thank you for your time and we meet again in my next session.